So we'll just get started right away. Hello, hello, hello. I see Valerie, you're there. Hello, Valerie. And I think other people are there as well. So let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Healthy Living Live. My guest today is Janine Elder. She is the author of this wonderful ebook that's called The Potato Reset. Weight Loss and Recipe Guide. I endorse it, and I don't endorse every book, so you know I had to have liked this. I want you guys to know, though, this is an ebook, so don't get all upset when you don't actually have the hard copy. I've got nearly 60-year-old eyes, and I can't see stuff on my phone, so I printed it out. I'm going to show you some of these wonderful photos in a minute, but first, I want to welcome my guest, Janine Elder. Hi. Hi. You look fantastic. Thank you. I hear that you're two pounds away. Yeah. From a 100 pound weight loss. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Just so people know you're not making it up, I, I see a pic here's a picture of you before. And that wasn't even my heaviest. That, was that my wasn't heaviest. your heaviest. Wow. How, wow. So, wait, this is my favorite though. Watch this. Look at this one, you guys. <laughs> you still have those pants? Yep, I do. But I would, I always recommend to my clients to never keep their heavy clothes, but something like that, you want to keep one pair, you know, yes. that's fantastic. Yes. Oh, we've got a lot of people coming on, Linda and Mary and Angela and Sarah and Noe and Tina Louise. And guys, feel free to share this broadcast right now with your people. So Janine, before we get into your wonderful book, I want to hear a little bit about your story because I'm not sure that all my uh viewers are familiar with you because you're sort of a rising star. You're going to be speaking soon at a conference with none other than Dr. McDougal. That's a great first time at that. So I'm going to post a link right now to your book. And if you use this link, guys, you will get 20% off. And we are going to talk a lot more about the book. I'll post it right here. As well. Yeah, you got to go through this link. Let me just post that paste. I'm going to put it right on the screen. There we go. All right. So here we go. So tell us about yourself. Uh, where do I start? It's a long story. Well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Where do you start? You obviously were overweight, at least verified by these pictures. Were you overweight most of your life? Um, I thought I was always fat, but looking back at my childhood pictures, I really wasn't. I was just a normal kid. But right. Um, once I got into my teenage, well, I say college years, started to actually put on weight, especially after I got my first job after college sitting at an office in, at a desk all day um, and eating what I thought was healthy <laughs> junk, uh, low fat snacks and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, and then just kept creeping up over the years. And then I got to my worst in my early thirties, which is that picture you saw mm. I got up to 260 pounds. I was also really sick. Uh, I didn't know what was wrong with me at the time, but I had Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. Mm. Um, I was extremely depressed and I just did not feel good at all. Just walking a block exhausted me. Wow. And you were only in your thirties. Yeah. I was like, wow. a seven year old. That's, that's incredible. I didn't wake up until I was in my fifties. So good for you. Were, you. were you always vegan or vegetarian or was that something you did initially to facilitate your weight loss goals? Yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah. I wasn't vegan or vegetarian. I don't think I even had any interest in it, even though I've been an animal lover my whole life. <laughs> I guess I just never made that connection, but uh, it was after I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's and still trying to feel better. The medication did help a little bit. It got me out of that depression and just, it helped me just get a little more normal and not be so lethargic. But then I had, there was a point where I had to start working on it myself. <laughs> so um, I just felt like, okay, I didn't feel that great. I was, also diagnosed with gallbladder. I had gallstones. Um, and uh, my, I had a personal trainer for a short stint and he told me about forks over knives. And my husband and I went and watched forks over knives. We ate our last non-vegan meal. <laughs> that, movie has, that movie has facilitated the change in probably more people than anything yeah. else throughout the 40 years I've been vegan. So wonderful. You know, it's interesting how you said you were an animal lover, but didn't make the connection because, you know, it's funny because that I've been vegan for 40 years and it was because a comment made to me by a veterinarian, because obviously I love my dog, you know how much I love my dog. You see how I interact with her, all my all my pets. And she said to me, she goes, you know, if you love your dog so much, how could you eat a cow? And I'm like, you know, it's saying like, well, she goes, well, if you love animals called pets, you know, why do you eat animals called dinner? And that one sentence was like, hey, you know, you're right. And immediately, boom, 
you know, I didn't eat animals anymore. That's impressive yeah. that your vet said that. Yeah, absolutely. I was, absolutely, you know, it's, it, I'm so fortunate, Janine, that I seem to attract like the only vegan wherever. Like I recently, I got a new iPhone and I had a problem. So I had to call Apple support. I got the vegan, like literally <laughs> call the cable company. I get the vegan. It's like, it's almost like, you know, it's almost like <laughs> I always get the vegan. So it's kind of cool. That's awesome. You're lucky. <laughs> you, now, but, but, but I want to continue with your story, but I noticed that you have a grater in front of you. So I'm wondering if by any chance you're going to be making one of the wonderful recipes from your book. Yes. I'm going to be making the most popular one. All the, right. Yeah. The broccoli tots. I see it's people post like, that all the time on our Ultimate Weight Loss Facebook page yeah. that you're a member of, and they look amazing. So now, now when you show me how easy they are, I can finally make them. Okay, so I love keeping baked potatoes in the fridge at all times. It's my mm -hmm. nice. I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to use, I've already shredded most of them, but I had a total of four medium baked potatoes. This is what I call medium. I don't know if that's technically a medium or not, but... Mm -hmm. And you're really easy it's because they've already been cooked. They're nice and soft. So you can just shred them. And if you were to try to do this with raw potatoes, it won't work because they're not, they're not sticky. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see here, but if I squeeze mm -hmm. it, it stays, you know, into a shape. So it stays. Right. Because the water's been cooked out already. Yeah. Yeah. So you definitely want to use leftover baked potatoes. So mm -hmm. I'll finish shredding this one and then we'll throw nice. it the ingredients and so I see you're keeping the skin on right yeah um, I usually end up with a little skin you'll see that I don't okay. use if there's a big chunk of skin in here I take it out okay. while you're doing that I'm gonna just show some of the beautiful one of the things I love about your book is uh, did you do these photos yourself yeah you, you know, you are very talented. I don't think people know that you're a graphic designer as well and that you actually have a website called Potato Wisdom where you design amazing T-shirts like this one, which you made just for me with my actual name on it, which I've worn on these broadcasts. And I have the same one you're wearing, but in purple. That's my favorite, the purple one. Yeah, and I love it. I love your V-neck. I didn't know it came. And, her, and she uses the softest T-shirts, guys. So I'm going to put down her website right here if you want to go look at some of her really cool T-shirts. I love the one that you have that says the secret to uh, potatoes. And what does it say? Tell me what it says. The secret to the slim. Secret, I love that one. The secret to slim is veggies and starch. <laughs> and it is the secret. Absolutely, it is the yeah. secret. So this is and she amazing. will be in Vegas, guys, and uh, she's actually creating either a tote bag or a T-shirt just for the Ultimate Weight Loss Live Conference, yeah. starring Dr. Neil Barnard. Uh, so this is a skin I have left over, which I'm not going to use. You could save this and bake them, just like kind of like a chip, mm -hmm. or give them to your. Well, I don't really give hey. this to my dogs, but oh, um, I would just eat them. Oh, they're a little dry, but yeah, that's okay. I eat the skin. You know, when I when I make things with, with that I'm peeling, I just eat. I mean, if it's organic, I eat the skin. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. This well, I can't get orga organic as easily around here as I used to when mm -hmm. I was in Vancouver. But so here's the potatoes. This is what she needs baking. She's yes. the broccoli tots. I like the name broccoli tots because I know like it sounds like tater tots, but I think a tots is like little. Yeah. This is a really good way to. Getting your veggies, especially for people that aren't into veggies, like myself. Like you. <laughs> I've gotten better though. The more no, you are, you are getting better. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, um, I, the better. Gail wants to know if we can do this recipe in the air fryer. Um, if if you just have a, a air fryer, like one of the newer types that don't mm -hmm. rotate, like we have one of those ones that rotate. I heard you can take the rotator thing out, mm -hmm. it's like a stir. You could do mm -hmm. that, but. Just as long as they're stationary, you don't want them moving around. Just want to let you know, some a lot of people are saying nice things about it. They're saying they're going to get the book. And that uh, Sandra says she loves you. And Violetta says you're talented and funny. And uh, Tina Louise says it looks like a very pretty book. And it is. Carol says she loves her potato t-shirt. So we got some fans on. So if you guys like this broadcast, share it. And you, you have a YouTube channel too, right? You went from yeah. banana wisdom to potato wisdom. Right. That is the that is the true wisdom that you finally went to potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it started off with banana wisdom because I wanted something vegan related, and I found something online that said it was known that the wise masters ate bananas or something. So I was like, mm -hmm. that sounds cool. But over the years, I realized I really don't like bananas that much. I only eat them <laughs> like banana ice cream or something. But 
Yep. So, so I've got some already steamed broccoli and I just used the floret part mm -hmm. and not the stem so much because they're kind of too hard. Mm -hmm. I to save those for my dogs. <laughs> so you want them, you know, a little bit steamed so they're kind of soft. So I just throw that in there. Mm -hmm. And this is really easy. Like Spice-wise, it's super simple. So we got some nutritional yeast here. We've got a quarter cup and a teaspoon of garlic powder. Yeah. And do, you any particular kind of, do you use any particular kind of nutritional yeast? Do you have a favorite oh, yeah, brand? Yeah. I knew someone was going to ask, so I kept it here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like this one, Bob's Red Mill. Okay, nice. I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, and I think I've heard Red Star is pretty good too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the one that's at Whole Foods in the bulk section, I believe that's Red Star as well. So, um, so we're just going to stir, mix this all together. This is the hard part, shaping them into tots. Oh, shaping them into tots, yeah. I make this recipe a lot. Sometimes I just throw in some spinach just to something quick because then I don't have to re or I don't have to heat them up, uh, heat up the spinach ahead of time. You just put in some chopped spinach. I wonder how it would be with kale, with little finely chopped kale. Yeah, as long as it's finely chopped. Right. It might be a little better to steam it first, though. Just yeah, no, I would, I would agree. Valerie says your cookbook is beautiful. She loves the photos and the cute graphics. So Sandy wants to know if Janine's recipes are all SOS free. So Sandy, the re uh, yes and no. So in other words, I wouldn't have endorsed a book that wasn't at least completely oil free, which her book is. She has minimal uses of sugar and salt, but they are completely optional. Would, yeah, that, would you I say that's correct? It. Yeah. Yeah, and I made a note in the book if people actually read the beginning of right, the right. book, is any of those recipes that have salt in it, or the only sugar that's in it is maple syrup, and that's in a sauce. So any of those recipes that have salt uh, is really just intended for people transitioning off a sad diet, because otherwise the stuff's gonna taste super bland. Right. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I hope I pronounced your name right. Hus I'm sorry, it's, I can't say it. Hus Husnally, the green stuff was broccoli, steamed broccoli. She's using only the florets. Oh, Sarah has an interesting question. Have you ever tried doing the tots with sweet potatoes? Um, no, I haven't. Well, that, So Sarah, why don't you do that and get back to us? It sounds like it might be good. Yeah, I don't know how easy it is to shred sweet potatoes. Yeah, that's a good point. Elizabeth wants to know, can you reheat them and take them to work? Yeah. Um, they won't be as good if you microwave them at work, but if you have a little toaster oven, mm -hmm. it might be all right. As long nice. as you're not expecting them to be crispy again. Right. It's always, even stuff with the air fryer guys, I mean, they do not, that stuff doesn't retain its crispiness. I mean, even if you used a deep fryer or went to McDonald's, if you keep it at room temperature, it doesn't, it doesn't stay crispy. Um, she, uh, Elizabeth wants to know, do I think Table Tasty will be good in this? Absolutely. I think Table Tasty is good in everything. That's my favorite salt-free seasoning and you don't need a lot. And thank you, Valerie, for sharing with your groups. And Anel, the broccoli is steamed and she's using just the florets. So this is the part that I don't like because I'm really, really, really lazy in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very efficient. We'll say that. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is just throw this whole thing on the pan and have one bake. That's what I was going to say. Maybe you could just bake it almost like a quiche, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can. It's not, just make it nice and thin and it comes out like a crispy, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it's just a big crispy hash brown pancake. Oh, sorry, Anneli, that I said your name wrong. I'm not wearing my hair. Yeah, see, this is what I'd have to do to read better, guys. Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry, Anne Ellie, because without glasses, it looks so like a nail. The cylinder shape that you create, if you want to do a proper huge cut, and it's Joel that hard. Book, it's just the name of the book is the potato the potato reset, and I'll post a link right now for you to get a twenty percent discount. So you have to it, maybe you could devise a tool that will that will shape these for yeah. you. But for now, I just put it in my hand and kind of shape it into a log. And then I wrap my hand around it and press on either side. Uh, the other thing you could do is just, you know, use like, this probably wouldn't be good, but like a little silicone cup or something. Like one mm -hmm. of those silicone uh, muffin right. cups. Mm -hmm. Just stuff it into there and then flip it over. Good idea. Uh, the other thing you can do is just little balls. That's a lot easier. So I'm going to do the rest. <laughs> It's balls, and then uh, you can see here, I'm just flattening it out. I love saying balls. 
<laughs> Last night in my dessert cooking class, I kept, there was a guy in there named Gary, and we were making these peanut butter fudge balls. And I kept saying, Gary, did you freeze your balls? And it just never got old the whole night, you know? <laughs> Let me just show some more pictures, because your, your photography, gosh, is just it's just so inviting. Look at that, guys. And remember, the guys, this is an ebook. I printed this out because my old eyes can't read on a, on a screen so well. Hey, Janine, if you write another book, can I contribute a recipe? Yeah. Because I have, like, so many recipes that didn't make it into my book, four of them specifically with potatoes, because my co-writer kept getting mad because every time I added a recipe, he had to change the entire index, you know, because it would change that, and he said no more. But I have some, and four potato recipes I'd love for you to include, yeah. if you would like. Yeah, I'd yeah. Love to have you kind of like a 2.0 and maybe yeah. a... Well, I'm hoping you have something that you can roll out in Vegas because Janine's going to be there with a, a T-shirt uh, yet to be designed. We're, we're having a contest in the Ultimate Weight Loss Vegas group to uh, come up with the best either tote or T-shirt that's uh, for that conference. And I hope you guys will come. You can see Janine there. And it's uh, Labor Day weekend. We've got Dr. Barnard and Goldhammer and Lyle and Alvira and myself and JP. And I can give you a hundred dollar discount code if you like. So what about this conference? Are you nervous? You're going to be speaking with the big doctor McD. Tell us about that and tell, tell everybody how they can come see you if they live in Canada. Yeah. So it's in Calgary. Um, I believe it's April 28th. Uh, mm -hmm. You can look it up. It's called forksmart.ca or it might be forksmart. There, there's two websites. I get them mixed up, but they're both the same people. It's just, I think it's forksmart.org, sorry, that you go to. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's some different speakers there. And it's the lady that she was just featured on Forks Over Knives that's running it. So she was, uh, she was featured on the Forks Over Knives blog. Kate McGoy Smith, huh? she's running it because she's so passionate about this lifestyle and healing through food. And we don't have a big presence in Canada for the whole plant-based thing. So if you want to go see somebody speak, most often you have to go to the U.S. <laughs> right. So she's trying to get, you know, more people out in Canada. And we've got Brenda Davis in Canada, the wonderful registered dietitian. Who? Who's that? Brenda Davis. Oh, okay. That's good. Cool. Yeah. So well, you're, you'll have to be the contingency. Gail says she's going to Vegas. I'm glad to hear that. And Monique is printing her book out. Uh, Sissy, my book should be released any minute because I just got the third proof yesterday. And once I can proof it, I can probably get it out hopefully within two weeks. Uh, let's see what other people are saying. Uh, when is your next book? It's uh, hopefully this month, guys. So, so I've got the, the you know, Louise preheated. is happy for your opportunity. Okay, go ahead. Excuse me. Um, I've got the oven preheated to 420 already. And I'm just going to throw these in there. Like that. Wow, and you have it. You have it on a piece of parchment paper, right? Yeah, I always line my baking sheets with parchment, and my tip for parchment is get a good kind. <laughs> what, about using, what about using a, a nonstick silicone baking mat like a silk yeah, pad? Yeah, that could work too. Um, I don't have. Then, you know, then, you don't, then you can just use them over and over. Right. Yeah, that would be ideal. I haven't got around to that. <laughs> That's okay. So, and how long do they cook for? Uh, I because honestly, when I cook stuff like this, I just throw it in the oven and then I go back to my desk and do my work and wait till I can smell it. <laughs> you can smell it, guys. Okay. Well, well, you want me to here in the book? I've got forty minutes. Forty minutes. Uh, well, then maybe it'll be it'll maybe it'll be ready just as we're we're uh, winding up the interview. Yeah. Look at these. Like that would be max. So you want to check your oven in twenty, just see how much time you need to add to it. And... Absolutely. So. When you saw, we'll get back to your story. When you saw Forks Over Knives, you and your husband made the change immediately. At the time, were you doing it for health or because you, you, you said you had already been overweight, but, or was it, was there like a wake up call because of your health or were you really just motivated to lose weight or both? You no, know, it's more for my health. I mean, weight loss was sort of in there, but I think my health was a bigger issue just because I mm -hmm. wasn't feeling that great. And mm -hmm. I saw all these stories in Forks Over Knives, people getting off their medication and uh, just feeling better. And also I had the gallbladder stuff going on. I just was getting tired of gallbladder pain. Um, but I didn't have like an overnight success like some people. Uh, I didn't get the no oil thing. I got everything else. That just, that part went over my head. <laughs> so it took me a couple of years to finally figure out that, you know, 
eating oil and the processed vegan stuff was not mm -hmm. going to make me feel better. So and when did it, when did you kick it into high gear? Like, because you, you said you're almost at 100 pounds. So when did the really active weight, because I love people's weight loss stories. And I always like to know if there was like just a wake up call or a defining moment. Like for me, it was when I broke my knee and I couldn't, I couldn't go to the bathroom without help, you know, and that was like, okay, I got to do, because I was too fat to use crutches. I couldn't. And so that's when I said, I'm doing something. Did you have a moment like that at all? Um, well, I've always been kind of like want to lose weight a little bit, but when I got more and when I really got to the point where I really, really wanted to lose the weight and just be done with it was, um, it was 2016. I was training for a Spartan race. It was one of those obstacle course races that you get all muddy. And, um, I didn't lose any weight like that year training. I was doing a lot of training, didn't lose any weight because I, I was just eating too much or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when I did the race, I was super strong. But because of my excess weight, I couldn't pull myself even over the smallest wall. <laughs> and I thought, next time I do another one of these races, I want to be at least 30 pounds lighter. So that was a motivating factor <clears throat> for me. Um, just, it just would make a lot of things easier. And, uh, but since after that, I gained some weight and then that's when I met you <laughs> and I had known about unprocessed and I knew, I knew this stuff. I knew what I was supposed to do and what I was supposed to eat and, um, spending the weekend with AJ and Heather, Heather Goodwin and Shada, uh, really inspired me and just gave me the confidence that I knew I could do this. Um, cause I don't know, whenever I see what AJ eats and stuff, I'm just like, I could <laughs> never do that. <laughs> so that, I think those two moments, just the desire to be lighter and to make, you know, doing those races easier and being fitter and feeling good. And then seeing other people do it made it nice. Possible. So Karen wants to know if you have a plant-based support group in Ontario or West Toronto that you can recommend. Um, I don't, uh, we moved here just over a year ago and I haven't really got that involved with community stuff yet. We kind of live in the suburbs. Um, mm. actually hold that thought. <laughs> if you're interested in a UWL type of group, there is a UWL Canadian uh, nice. called Canada. And I don't know if Jen's here right now, but, um, we could probably link that a little later, but right. yeah, there's a UWL Canadian and U S border, I guess we called it. It was just for anybody living close to the border. But a lot of us are from Kitchener, Toronto, and sometimes we get together uh, and nice. have a really nice meal. Um, just SOS free, unprocessed, delicious food. I love the way you, I love the way you guys pronounce my book in Canada, unprocessed. It does sound a lot more refined and dignified. Than <laughs> So Heather's on. Heather's watching our mutual friend who has her own tremendous weight loss story. I'm going to have her on the show on uh, February uh, 21st. We'll be interviewing Heather in person. Tina Louise says she finally only quit oil completely this week, lost three pounds. Absolutely. That'll do it. Oh, Angie says, where does she live? I'm heading to Toronto today. So you guys talk to each other on the thread while we continue baking the broccoli tots. So this book is beautiful. Uh, I don't buy a lot of eBooks because of the fact that, you know, I I'm old school, but yours is just, it's, it's just, I love the photographs. I love the recipes. How long did it take to come up with 45 recipes like this? All potatoes, by the way. <laughs> Um, well, I, I worked on the book for probably six months. Wow. That was procrastination and just, I don't know, it was just overwhelming to me to think how big the project was. And, um, I, I wanted to take the photos myself. So I had to learn how to do the photo, the photography and, um, yeah. So there was some procrastination and hesitation in there and just, do a little bit of it and then then I just went hardcore and I think it was probably two months of just going hardcore to come up with everything. <laughs> well, you did you did a terrific job. This launched right around Thanksgiving if I remember correctly. Did yeah. It? Yeah, per perfect time. Perfect timing. So I'm sure people want to know what you eat, what you ate to get slim, what you eat today. People always love to know what, you know, people want me to do like what I eat in a day. I eat the same thing every day. So I think it'd be kind of boring. But what do you eat in a day? And what did you eat to lose almost 100 pounds? Uh, well, I mean, the first 
what I'd say the first 60 of that was a while back, you know, after I got my Hashimoto's figured out. So um, this past year, year and a few months, I lost 44 pounds total eating this way. And um, I eat a lot of potatoes. Uh, I've been whole foods, whole foods plant-based for three years. And I was never able to stick to it 100% because I was eating foods that now I realize uh, I can overeat on easily, like white rice. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'd let in a little bit of uh, Gardein products and yeah. snacks. And gateway, and gateway. <laughs> yeah, wait, my gateway, dog's going to turn you know what? That's that's that is my one guilt. I, I I hear you about white rice. I never have it at home, but when I travel, it's the easiest thing to get. And yeah. boy, I do enjoy it when I have it. It's it's good. It's really good. Yeah, and I usually involved having vegetable stir fry with some cashews and sauce that had tons of sugar in it. So I I would say I was whole food plant based at the time, not really realizing how much junk I actually was eating because once. When I was training for the Spartan race, my coach said, okay, we have one month before your race. You have to eat clean for this month. And I remember when she said that, I was just like, oh, you know, like, this is going to be hard. And that, that's when I realized, like, why is it hard? <laughs> I guess I'm eating more than what, I, what I'm letting on. So, mm -hmm. um, but once I started focusing more on potatoes, uh, I found that my cravings went away. I felt more satisfied when I ate. And it was really difficult to overeat my calories on potatoes mm -hmm. uh, compared to rice. So right. uh, I eat a lot of what's in the book. <laughs> no, you're, you're right. You know, raise your camera a little just because the top of your, I don't, you're too pretty to get the top of your head cut off. So there we go. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Thank How's you so much. That? Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to see, wanted to seal. I agree with you. I think that uh, as far as overeating starch, you know, starch is the whole thing, the legumes, the, uh, the grains and the potatoes, sweet potatoes and winter squashes, I find, at least for me and for many of the people, that the potato category, including sweet potatoes and winter squashes like kabocha, delicata, hubbard, those are not only the lowest in caloric density, but they are the most satiating. And that's why it is much harder to overeat than, because there is, there is something, I always think that grains have like little opiates hidden in them because even though I can eat grains, it's so much easy to overeat them because it's like, I'll, I'll eat a certain amount of potatoes. Like, like I'll eat a pound and a half in a sitting. It's not a problem, mm -hmm. but no more. And I'll be full for, you know, four to six hours. But when there's rice in a rice cooker, an instant pot or millet or quinoa or oat groats, it's like, hmm, I think I'll have a little more. I think I'll have a little more, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can yeah. definitely eat more greens than I can potatoes. And Same here. I do way better when I don't always eat just potatoes. I do eat other stuff, but I find my weight loss is more steady and yeah. my appetite's better. Uh, like, you know, I'm not snacking in between meals when I focus on potatoes. Right. So I, I um, agree. I, I agree that, you know, there's something called the satiety index developed by a doctor named Susanna Holt. And she said that the most satiating food is the potato, the white potato, too, not the sweet potato, not the Yukon gold. And I know I taught a class yesterday. And, and so there really wasn't going to be an opportunity. It was a dessert class. And so there wasn't going to be an opportunity for me to eat until nine o'clock. And so four o'clock, I had some mashed potatoes. And I mean, I just, I'm not hungry. And I'm around all these chocolate desserts. And it's like the potato really is magical for weight loss, for everything. So it's, uh, it's, it's really when people bash potatoes, oh my. Used to hate sweet potatoes, but now she loves them. So there was a question for both you and I, and I'll let you go first. Did you guys also exercise to lose your weight? I didn't. <laughs> me neither. Me I neither. Not. I exercise now, but but I did not exercise to lose these. 50. I, 47 yeah. of the pounds came off without exercise. Another three came off after I started. I'm starting to get into exercise now because I have yeah. about 30 pounds to go and mm -hmm. um, I'm starting to feel flabby. <laughs> and not yeah. that I wasn't doing anything, but, I, you know, I get a little bit of loose skin and feeling a little flabby and I just, I, I really love strength training and I want to get back into it. So I'm starting that now. But uh, for the past year and a half, I just based on my previous experience of intense working out, I found that my appetite was really, it, it increased my appetite and I had a hard time creating a calorie deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be a different story now that I'm doing the potato thing, but I found just gentle walking, like just walking. And maybe doing a little bit of yoga here and there. That was enough. But 
I think the main thing is just doing what you enjoy doing. So right. movement for enjoyment and not for weight loss. <laughs> Right. I agree with you. And there are other reasons. There's there's brain health, there's bone health, cardiovascular health. Most importantly, what I like about exercise for my people in ultimate weight loss is that it actually helps rewire the brain to help you overcome your addictions. And it increases your self-esteem so that you can stick to a healthy eating plan. Because at the beginning, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose, you're not going to get that increase of self-esteem. If you have 100 pounds to lose and you lose 10 pounds, that's going to be fantastic. But people may not notice. But your internal audience that Dr. Lyle talks about notices when you exercise. And so that's one of the reasons it's it. And it also helps give you the willpower. People think, oh, it's going to deplete your willpower. It actually gives you the willpower to stick to the healthy eating plan. Yeah, a lot of Jennifer saying she also exercised. Uh, um, yes, I teach classes locally, but locally is in the San, uh, Southern California, specifically Sherman Oaks. So you have you have dogs, though, Janine. So that, that's good exercise. You can walk yeah. your four dogs. Yeah. Jewel is also saying she can overeat on grains. That seems to be a pretty common thing, especially with women. Oh, so Karen, a a AJ, somebody else asked this, but what am I doing? My complexion is totally glowing. Okay. So um, I'm wearing a shirt that says got kale. And I'm telling you guys that, I mean, right now I'm going to tell you exactly what makeup I'm wearing. And it's not very much because I didn't have time because I went to spin class today, but vegetables, this is why we got to get Janine to eat vegetables because she is a very pretty girl right now, but I want her to age flawlessly and vegetables. There is something in them guys more so maybe fruits too, but vegetables there, there's anti, you know, people look for these uh, expensive creams that are hundreds of dollars to, for antioxidants. What foods have the most antioxidants? Vegetables. So I eat a lot of vegetables. The only thing I'm wearing now, and this seems to make a difference. I, it's vegan, uh, product called Becca backlight primer and it just makes you glow. So Becca and back Becca and vegetables. That's what I got to say. So, all right, let's see any questions for you. Oh, somebody learned, Norma learned about me from Dr. Yamada at Kaiser, which Kaiser Norma, maybe I can invite her to my class. That's so cool. Sherry can also overeat rice and beans. Yeah. There's something magical about potatoes. So when you, you, in your, okay, what from listening to everything? Yeah. She, Tina hears my voice in her head. If it's in my house, it's in the mouse. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, Sarah likes to dance. You're right. You should do what you love for exercise. So. In the book, it, it is a cook. See, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't read the first part, the weight loss part or the book part. I just got it for the recipes. You do recommend. A few. Yeah, which, which is great. And and so you do recommend, uh, like for some people, uh, a potato reset. Like, so talk about that a little because you're not telling people to just eat potatoes for a year. So talk about how your program's a little bit different. Um, so it's not intended to be long term. I think of it more as a launching pad to mm -hmm. a, a really healthy whole foods plant diet. Uh, it's a really good way to transition off of a sad diet, um, standard American diet, and reset your taste buds and get out of what Dr. Lyle calls the pleasure trap. Mm -hmm. And so I ideally, I think people get the best results if they do it for a month. Um, when I did that for a full month, I learned so much about myself. I learned to figure out when I was actually hungry uh, because I was bored uh, or just maybe hormonal or... <laughs> Uh -huh. or upset or something or I, I just learned to tell the difference because what AJ says is if you're not hungry enough for vegetables you're not hungry well uh -huh. for me I would probably some of the vegetables I hated so much at that time that I probably would rather have starved <laughs> <laughs> than eat them like I would be beyond hungry I'd be desperate it'd be like eating a worm out of the ground or something uh -huh. but with the potato I kind of use the same idea as what Andrew says to Andrew Taylor you know, if I'm not in the mood for a potato, then I'm really not hungry. So yeah. I used that for myself to get through that month. And yeah, I really realized uh, how much, uh, even if it wasn't processed, that I was really uh, kind of addicted to a sweet taste, uh, like smoothies. I used to drink smoothies every morning for breakfast, even though it was Me healthy. Too. And uh, I put a tiny little bit of spinach in it and then I had a bunch of, uh, stevia to it and uh, oh. now I can't even drink it like that it's so sweet so anyway yeah, I, it's, a, it's a really good way to reset your taste buds and just kind of reset your brain a little bit because you're figuring out uh, you're figuring out uh, how your relationship with food is and what your satiety you kind of know when you're full and when you're not and I just it was really eye-opening for me and when I see people going through that in my group 
that's the best part. You know, they say I lost weight. I'm really happy for them. But when they say, I realized this about my eating habits, I'm just jumping for joy because that to me is the best part of it. And the weight loss is mm -hmm. um, just a bonus. Yep. I agree. Um, I put, I'm trying to read somebody struggling with satiety here. Oh, uh, Tina Louise. Yeah. Potatoes. You will not be hungry on potatoes. They are really the most satiating food you can imagine. There's some people in my group I've noticed, and I know Dr. Lyle talks about it too, there are occasions where some people have a harder time uh, with their satiety signals, I guess. It's, I don't know if it's a brain thing or a stretch receptor mm -hmm. thing in their stomach, but uh, there is some people, not everybody. It's more of a rare situation where you know they don't get full on potatoes. They don't know when to mm -hmm. stop. Um, and it could be people coming from a, a binge eating background yeah. um, or just generally overeating mm -hmm. and the cram circuit that would be a good one to watch in that case yeah, that's, a, that's a great lecture so do you have a problem if i like if people ate potatoes and vegetables like because to me what i'm what i don't understand is like i i understand the concept of mono eating because it, i think it is a great reset i don't think it necessarily has to be potatoes it's great that it is uh it could be anything really i mean if somebody only ate one food the, the truth is is that variety encourages overeating that's why our friend heather says variety is the spice of obesity i think it's the kiss of death for somebody that's overweight or a food addict so i love the idea of simplifying the choices but would somebody not reset if they just ate Potatoes and vegetables, because I, I just have a problem taking vegetables away from people oh, for yeah. any reason. Yeah. I encourage that my my plan is a little different. I don't encourage people to not eat vegetables. That's why Good. I have it in the recipes. Um, but if there is a case where somebody is like me and just gags over vegetables, right. I wouldn't say pre push it so much. Just sure. Just eat it, you know, do it and not long enough until your taste buds reset and then start reintroducing mm -hmm. the vegetables nice. and kind of test out which ones are more tolerable. Like I literally gagged on broccoli every time I tried wow. it my entire life. And no matter what, you know, cheese sauce, vegan cheese sauce, whatever people told me to do with it, mm -hmm. I could not eat it. And yeah. after 30 days or four weeks of just potatoes, um, broccoli didn't taste horrible to me. I didn't yeah. love it, but it was tolerable. Yeah. Such a big you know, I, I think you're going to find Janine that in a couple of years from now, you're going to love it because there's something, especially if you ate a lot of sugar, a lot of junk food. Um, we don't like the bit naturally. We don't like the bitter taste like the kale and the broccoli, but as we, eliminate the sugar in the flour for a long time, you can actually learn to start loving these things. Like I never liked arugula. I thought it was the most disgusting thing and I actually crave it now. That's how crazy it is. So let's see, we have a question here from, I just saw it. Uh, well, Elaine's saying eat, eat boring, too much variety sets her off. Uh, Jeannie wants to know if I still eat big salads every day, yes, and sometimes I blend them because I'm in a hurry. Now, Fab says she tried eating potatoes galore and gained weight. Not sure it works for all. I'd like to know how you ate them, if there was any oil or sugar or salt in the mix, and, and how you ate them, because I've never heard of anybody gaining weight if they only eat potatoes, because there's a calorie density. There are 400 calories a pound, and according to the research by Dr. Rolls, it's impossible to gain weight at a calorie density of 567 calories per pound or less. So how? what else were you eating? You know, because uh, if you were eating potatoes galore and had oil or fat with them or, uh, you know, that's what I'd like to know. Because look at Andrew Taylor's story. A year, nothing but potatoes, 120 pounds. So you must have been eating something else. So even, like even just overdoing the sauces. Um, mm -hmm. In my book, I encourage people, if you're going to use store-bought sauces, and even some of the ones, the sauce recipes in my book, um, I encourage you not to eat more than a couple tablespoons. So I would use something like this to put your sauce in, instead of dumping it all over your food, just dip it, like dip your fork in and then grab your food. But you can easily overdo it. Yeah. So that's why I like to make my own sauces. <laughs> So Kathy's saying that my link took her to the website, but she doesn't see the discount. So how how do they get the, the okay. 20 so you discount? Just, there's a little window that opens up when you buy the book. And there's a little uh, tag, it's tiny, and it says, got a code? So you click on that code button, and you type in Chef AJ, all one word. I don't think it matters oh, I, if it's lowercase or upper. I don't think it matters. But. Oh, I, I wasn't giving the code. That's my bad, you know? Okay. <laughs> okay, Chef 
eight pages. Sorry about that, guys. I totally didn't know I, I, I had a code. Very good. So, you know, I wonder, though, if, at least with a lot of the people in, in ultimate weight loss, if I, I don't mind them doing, you know, all potatoes, if that's what they feel they need to do. But I worry that the sauces, if especially if they have sugar in them, maybe not so much salt, that that is, is going to help some people not be able to reset as easily because the whole idea of a taste neuroadaptation is to get rid of all sugar, oil, and salt. Yeah. So what I recommend is I, I there's a whole sauce guide in my book and it's mm -hmm. showing the, ketchup and mustard and I have little paragraphs about each one and yeah. what to look for like You're just to do your sauce. best getting the lowest <laughs> salt and I mean, this lowest. is like a, the most beautiful photography seriously <laughs> like I mean just um, gorgeous I used to love ketchup and after that I hate it so mm. it's too sweet for me now it tastes like candy yeah you <laughs> know what and I also talk about it in my book if you're gonna make your own sauces you can do something like this this is all in French <laughs> <laughs> tomatoes that you get in the jar and you get the ones without sodium and you can just throw in some Italian seasoning and garlic and onion powder or something like that and I could and maybe some balsamic vinegar and you got your own kind of unsweetened ketchup even a recipe for sweet potato ice cream love it I've actually made something similar to that that is so cool I'm just showing some of these beautiful pictures yeah, oh yeah I make this too the Hasselback potato I yeah. love these Look at this. Those, are good. those are really, those are really, really fun to eat. And you can definitely do those in an air fryer. I've done it. Let's All see right. if we have any more. Hey. Oh, that's a cute dog. What's that puppy's name? This is Penny and she wants the potato. Well, I don't blame her. I was her. actually gained weight when I was doing this. My oh, my A good they pound each. Bailey loves uh, eating mashed potatoes. So tell me about what your oh Jen is on. Is that the Jen you were talking about, Jen Noonan? That, yep. that will know where the meetups are. Jen, there was a question for you. People are asking if there's any meetups in Canada. You know, you have a recipe for a pizza crust made out of potatoes. Now I have that. That sounds absolutely fascinating. It's good. Uh, you can do and all taco the shell. Look, wait a second. You have taco shells made out of potato, bagels made out of potatoes. That, that's pretty genius you know yeah and the the potato crust if you want it to be like if you tend to overeat you could just uh -huh. sub in some cauliflower in with the potato so you're not just having all potato call cannon yeah. puffs that's amazing if any of you have made any of these recipes let's hear from you which ones you like because that pizza sounds amazing don't forget, 20% off, you need to use my name, Chef AJ, in the in the coupon code box. I didn't realize. Look at that. Panini, instead of bread, made out of potatoes. This is absolutely genius. So say again, because a lot of people are joining us in progress. Oh, here's the potato pizza. Look at that. Um, where you're speaking on April 28th, because we have a lot of people on Canada watching. And what are you going to be speaking about? Oh, uh, I'll be speaking uh, in Calgary at the Fork Smart summit uh and i'll just be basically telling my story and uh kate the lady running it's particularly interested in my story because my story isn't this perfect you know i just went vegan and everything went was wonderful um i think she feels my story is relatable because you know i went through some ups and downs but i never gave up and i figured out what worked for me and hopefully you know some people there will see what i've done and I just want to spread the message of how awesome eating potatoes and vegetables is. And especially what she's done, guys. Yeah. And you can buy the skinny bitch in training shirt at one of her websites, potatowisdom.com, along with a lot of other amazing shirts that she designs. This is one of my favorites and another one of my favorites. Sorry to interrupt, but you, okay. uh, yeah. so you had a very spectacular success story. Get it? <laughs> spectacular. Get it? And especially having Hashimoto's, um, mm -hmm. in the Hashimoto's community, a lot of us are told to eat paleo. And uh, I just, I call BS. And I want other people to know that you can eat potatoes when you have Hashimoto's. That's one of the foods they tell you to get rid of. All nightshades. And I'm living proof that that's not the case. I have it too, and that's all I eat is potatoes. Yeah. I love, I just, I love your graphics too. Look at this. Yeah. Just adorable. Just such it's such a well done book, you guys. And twenty percent off if you use the link I gave you with the code Chef AJ. Oh, so Chelly, uh, 
Shelly is saying the pizza crust is delicious. The broccoli swats, uh, swats. The broccoli tots are yum. She loves the sweet potato chili. Joanne loves your broccoli soup. And Noe says the pizza crust is the bomb. She eats that pizza three times a week. I've got to make that. I really have to stop being so lazy because I eat the same thing every day. But if I'm going to make a recipe, I'm going to definitely make one of yours, you know? Speaking of recipes, if you're joined us late at the top of the show, Janine made her most popular recipe from the book, the broccoli tots, and they're in the oven. Are you going to check them now and see yeah. if they're, uh, yeah. I think they probably just, yeah. Sometimes nobody, I don't even flip my nobody, head. there's people on uh, watching with paleo, that, with paleo, with Hashimoto's. Nobody has to eat paleo at, at all. Uh, I, I lost all my weight while I was hypothyroid. I didn't even start taking medication until years after I had lost the weight. So oh, they like the, uh, Robin likes your potato leek soup. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's some forums that, for Hashimoto's that you'll get mm -hmm. kicked out of if you mention anything about being vegan. It's pretty wow. bad. It leaves you feeling very alienated because you're already not feeling great and nobody understands what you're going through and then you get kicked out because you're vegan. It's just crazy. So it's really important for me to get this message out to people with Hashimoto's and other autoimmune conditions. Lupus and so all the ones they tell you, go on a paleo diet. <laughs> it's like that's not going to help you reduce your inflammation. So. Nope. No. Oh, Angela, thank you. She just downloaded the book and bought two shirts. I hope you use the discount code. I will post it on the screen briefly, and you go use the name Chef AJ. Yeah, the shirts are twenty percent off. Uh, there's no code needed for those. It's already marked down. So wow, there you go. Make sure you use the Chef AJ code. So when when do we eat? <laughs> oh, <laughs> should be soon. They won't be as crispy as what I like, but. Yeah, we just got it yeah. in the oven in time. Pam says one of her favorite meals is potatoes, sweet potatoes, and Brussels sprouts cooked in the IP. Yeah, why doesn't everybody post their potato, favorite potato recipe either from June's book or just from your own life? Mine is actually the thing I made two episodes ago, episode, uh, I believe it was 50 or 59 of Weight Loss Wednesday, the, the potato strata. Maybe Janine will put that in her next book. That was delicious. Okay. Do you use your... I'm going to have for lunch that's not... It's a mix of potato and lentils. Nice. Do That's you have an instant pot? Do you have yes. an instant pot? Yes. It's good. Fun. You can. You don't even have to use. Uh, if you use instant pot potatoes, it'll work with this shredding method too. You just don't want to overdo them. You don't want to be soggy. But you could instead of baking your potatoes, you can pressure cook them, but keep them in their whole state. But uh, my friend Hannah, you guys know how you call her Hannah. She just sent me what she was making for lunch today. And I said, how'd you do that? So I just did it too. So it's lentils, potatoes, um, tomatoes, and garlic mm. powder. And just throw it in the Instant Pot. It's so good. So That no sounds good. How long, how long did you cook it for? Uh, it was 20 minutes. It was just on wow. for the last hour. But um, And there's so many things you can do with leftover baked potatoes. Uh, one of my favorite things to do other than like, the hash browns, which I eat almost every day, hash browns, uh, is I love to make house. crispy smashed potatoes out of them. So, Have you ever, um, when you do the hash browns, do you shred them yourself or do you buy the frozen ones? I'm not lucky enough to have uh, frozen ones available that don't have some something else in it, like oil or... Right, right. dextrose or salt, sure. But I like this better. I did, when I was in the U.S., I... Like, usually every time I'm in the U.S., I go to Trader Joe's because I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. And I've tried the frozen ones. To me, they're not as good as this. This, this tastes it's the way fresh. better. And it's so, so fast. Do you have an air fryer? Do you have an air fryer? Uh, we have one of the old ones, like the oh. turns. Oh, the turns. Okay. Yeah. So Gail says, do we put a, a, dis, a, a space between Chef and AJ for the 20% off discount no, code? it's all one word. All one word, Chef AJ. Okay. He says, are there more... Potatoes that are more nutrient dense than others besides sweet potatoes. You know, I don't know that. I, I don't worry about nutrient diversity or density since I'm eating such a wide variety. There probably are. And my guess, Tina Louise, is that if a potato has more color, like a purple potato, it's probably going to have more antioxidants than, say, a white potato. But eat them all. Just eat a wide variety of potatoes, you know. one I do know has more iron, I believe, is the russet. Mm. I love, well, I think for French fries, russets cannot be beat. For hash browns and French fries, russets can't be beat. And for mashed potatoes, Yukon Golds can't be beat. That's my opinion as a professional chef. Oops. 
So this is another thing you can do is just smash them down with a fork. Wow. And the air get into it and gets nice and crisp. You throw on some spices and that's like so the a super easy thing to do. The skins, right? Yeah. Um, you just throw cool. it in the oven with your vegetables or something and roast it yeah. until it's crispy. And I do that sometimes when I just don't want to do anything else. Jody, I'm posting the website for her book right now in the comment thread. I've posted it a few times, 20% off with the code Chef AJ, no spaces. So I don't know if you guys watch my live uh, broadcast at four o'clock on Wednesdays, Weight Loss Wednesdays, but today I am doing a potato recipe you guys haven't seen. They're called stuffing muffins, so I hope you'll watch. BJ so loves Yukon Golds, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Colleen says uh, uh, that I should shred cooked golds. They're fantastic. Cool. Hmm. Yeah, Link I for the book. <laughs> Terry, I'm going to post it on the screen right now. I've been posting it every so often in the thread, but here you go on the screen. There you go. All right. I just want to see the finished product. I'm just, I'm just stalling for time. So, so you say you got, you want to lose 30 more pounds, but you look great to me. I mean, I can't, I mean, you look fantastic. I, I mean, I, I met you about, about a year and a half ago. You look good. In my legs. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, then, but then we'll, we'll just photograph you from the waist down. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, are you I'm not set on a number, but yeah. I guess, you know. Are you, are you nervous about your first live presentation at a plant-based conference? Yes, I'm <laughs> very nervous. Yeah, well, I told yes, you, to Toastmasters, just practice, practice, practice. Yes. Do you have an outfit picked out? Are you going to wear pants? Are you going to wear the CC for me? I don't get, I really don't get nervous because I've been doing acting for so long and I do stand up and improv. The only time I ever really, really got nervous was the third time speaking at McDougal. So the first two times I was there as a chef and I've been cooking, I've been cooking for, oh, somebody wants to say hello. Okay. Uh, she always has to get in the action. So if, if Janine can have her dog on, we can have you on. So, but when I spoke, when I gave my From Fat Vegan to Skinny Bitch lecture, which if you guys haven't seen, I really recommend you go to YouTube and see it. I, I, I just almost didn't show up, honestly. I was so scared. And one of the hardest things was, uh, figuring out what to wear and because I'm you know I have kind of an eclectic style and so I ended up wearing a black dress and I had somebody else actually shop for me and dress me because I didn't know what to wear so Pam wants to know if you always use organic I personally don't I try to but I travel full-time and it's impossible what about you Janine uh, I just try to when I can but where I live it's not as easy to get a hold of right and uh, BJ saying her favorite Janine video is the one, oops, it goes so fast, where you get steps around her house cleaning. Oh. Yeah, I did a video recently on how to get 10,000 steps indoors just because the weather's been so crappy. Uh -huh. And I know people get stuck inside and I hadn't been doing much for a couple months. And I thought, this is ridiculous. I got to start moving around. So I did all these experiments to see what would give you the most steps in the shortest amount of time. And. I also did some stuff that would help people with mobility issues, like seated stuff, and it was fun. So, nice. yeah, the all are ready now. I so tell us, tell us about where they, one sec though, tell us where they can see your videos. Oh, if you go to youtube.com mm -hmm. slash potato wisdom or just search potato wisdom on YouTube, you'll find me there. Mm hmm. Cool. So we're making broccoli tots. This is the big reveal. Thank you guys for your nice comments about my lecture. Oh, they look so good. I want that. You've been, oh my God, they look so good. I like mine a little bit crispier than this, but yes. it's still good. And then there's the ones that I just did because I want to, they're easier to make into. Hey, that cheese, sounds but... fun though. It sounds fun to smush it into a patty. Yeah, it's fine. You can get, if you have kids, you can get your kids to help you make these. It's fun. To... I would imagine smush it into a patty, it might be crispier, quicker. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. And that's a lot of times I take that same recipe and make it into one big flat hash brown and I press it down so it's nice and thin and it bakes in about 20 minutes. It's nice and crispy. So that's usually what I do most of the time. But if that's you have, great. You want to make a fun meal for the kids or for yourself, you know, right. these are fun. These are and it's, it's fun. And it's a great way to sneak in vegetables for the vegetable adverse, like like Janine and other children. 
They look amazing. Well, thank you. You're, you're just, you're sweet. You're very delightful. If you guys want to see Janine in person, you can go to the Fork Smart Conference in Calgary, Canada on April 28th. You can come to the Live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference in Las Vegas on September 1st and 2nd, where hopefully she'll have a table again this year and be selling her, her book, The Potato Reset, and hopefully her new book that she's working on, as well as her T-shirts. You can find all her wonderful original graphic designs. And, and what I love about your stuff is the T-shirts are so soft. It's They're not stiff and hard. These are the ones she – this is one of her most – more popular – how do I do this? Like The one yeah. when she's yeah. – it's, like, the, so the, weird. The skinny bitch is, like, is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, she's so wearing – there you go. And then this one, and she's wearing skinny bitch in training. And one of one of my favorite shirts of hers is the secret to slim is starch and potatoes. Can I post the link again? Yes, I'm going to post it right here up on the page. So go grab that book. And remember, guys, it is an ebook. I printed it out, but it is it's, it is an ebook. So and you can this is a great book. Well, that's the great what? thing about a PDF is you can go through it on your computer and say, I want to cook this recipe today. And if you like it printed, you just print that page off. And, right. You know, That's you true. That's true. I just, I like having the whole thing though. There's something, you know, when yeah. you're something nice about holding it in your hand. So that's great. So I look forward to seeing, you're going to be on the cruise. I'm not going this year. But I hope you have a great time. Thank you. Yeah. That's next week. <laughs> Are you going with your husband? No, nope, just me. Uh Oh, <laughs> they'll be friends. Your friends going. Yeah, I won't be totally alone. So. <laughs> oh my God! Well, I'm sure, I'm sure people will talk to you. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's that. It's been my pleasure, you guys, talking to the lovely Janine Elder, the author of this wonderful ebook, The Potato Reset, which we've given the link all throughout the broadcast for twenty percent off. You're welcome, Colleen. Where do I go for the download, Debbie? Uh, I'll keep. I've posted it about twenty times in this thread, so I'm sure you're going to find it. So uh, just the, Jody's saying the link not working. That doesn't make sense. Tina, the name of her YouTube channel is Potato Wisdom. That's also the name of her website where she sells her T-shirts. So, guys, I'm going to post the link one last time before we go where you can get 20% off with the code Chef AJ. And, Janine, thank you so much. And congratulations on your nearly 100-pound weight loss success. That's extraordinary. So now now the journey starts in the maintaining phase. That's even uh, – that's uh, it's going to be great yeah, for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's fun. Absolutely. And I wish you the best of luck. And, and I can't wait to hear how successful you were at your first uh, time speaking at a conference. And no less with Dr. McDougall. But man, you, you hit a big girl. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for making such great recipes. And thanks all of you guys for watching another installment of Healthy Living Live. We'll be back in three hours with Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm doing six recipes today, including a new potato recipe that I hope if Janine likes, she'll put it in her next book. So thanks again for watching. I'm Chef AJ, and I make healthy, taste delicious, and Janine makes healthy, taste delicious and beautiful. Bye, everybody. Bye. It's always hard ending the broadcast. <laughs> There's a button, and it doesn't ever work. You guys are welcome. This I go through this every week. I keep hitting this thing that says end broadcast, but it doesn't end. So I guess we're going to be here forever. Please end. I'll just dance for you guys. Yeah, this is I crazy.